you better speak English, right? I, I almost didn't understand you. See, I was born and raised on Pluto planet. Speak English, things like that. Okay, right. So, and the record is on. And um, uh, let's let's take a, a quick look at this file, okay, and see if you get it. Actually, simply put, this is the class that belongs to structural engineers, so to speak. So when, when we want to build something, we are concerned about how strong our building is going to be, correct? In fact, you know, according to history, human beings used to stay in caves, right? Because they cannot build houses. And when we, when we, when we build a house, first, first and foremost, people start building things by making a guess. They guess. Say, this beam is big enough, columns big enough, without any calculation. So, sure, you know that we, we human beings, has built things long before the something that we call engineering occurs, right? People uh, has had houses and places to live long before the engineering profession. We all know that. So how could they? They guess. But when things got better, we got something called science. We make our guess more educational, you see? So it, it, it's, a, it's a good word to know that uh, we, we do something that we call educated guess. That means we, we still guess. Do we still guess? What do you think? Do we? Absolutely, we still guess. Can you actually know how much the load your house carries? Impossible. You can put so many things in your own bedroom, right? Who's gonna know that? So we still guess in a way, but we guess with more education. So we come with a beautiful word. We do the educated guess. We guess with principle. And this will give us the proper load. We guess how much our structure will have to withstand. That's part of the job. So this, the more educated guess become, this load generally is governed by law now. Meaning, you can't make a wild guess on how much your house will have to carry the load anymore. The law says that if you want to build a house, at least your house must have the structure that is strong enough to withstand the load according to the law. You cannot break that. Or for example, I want to build a school, university, the law would say that I must make sure that the floor in this building must be able to withstand the life load up to some number. I cannot argue that actually, you know, my class students don't come. Can I reduce the load? No, it's a law. So that is part of the educated guess. Many, you know, engineers have come before us and they collect the data and they suggest the number that you should follow. So once we know the load, according to the law, we're gonna to have to provide the structure to support the load. So it's simple enough, right? But it's, it's our job to make sure that we, our building have proper structure to support the laws, sorry, support the laws according to the law. But, you know, you are engineers, you actually handle everything. So there may be times when the number according to the law is too low, 
right? It, it is possible. So you must know. You cannot say, hey, the law says 400 kilogram per square meter. That's a low. I decide 400 and the building collapsed. It's not my fault. But you know, actually, this is a special room that will have to house some safe that is very heavy. You must know that too, even though it's not in, in, in the law. Okay? I hate this map. Keep coming on. So we have to provide the structure. For example, this is uh, okay. This is the roof. Uh, I think this is uh, is, is it CB one or CB two? I don't remember the name of the roof. Probably CB two. Uh, the one with the the, the red floor on the ground floor, Landeng. So you don't know that either. Oh, good. So you just like me. I think it's CB two. So see. I think this is installed afterward, the roof. So you can see the roof here. Now the roof uh, is supported by some kind of truss system. So this is the roof itself. You need to provide this. You see, that's a purlin. Truss is some kind of purlin. And then this sits on the rail. So this is uh, the system that we're talking about. And now when you design this, you, uh, let's say the blue one, the rafter, not a purling. Anyway, this is uh, a, 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 the, not a good picture to talk about the system because I, I don't think it's a very good system. You can't put the roof on a handrail like that. But anyway, that, that's what they do. So you can see that this uh, rafter has to support the load coming from this plastic roof, right? And then where does the load go? The, root, the load from the roof will have to come on here and then this will sit here. So the, if you can look at this as a simple beam, the reaction of this simple beam will be supported by this green handrail. So this is the system that we are talking about, okay? And it is our job to provide the system to the building. So that is why you need to learn a more complicated system. So um, it's just an example. Let's move on to, to, the, to this picture. I think you'll see better. You see, the main difference in this class is that when nobody is going to tell you how much the load that the beam has to carry in mechanics or materials, you have the beam presented to you with the load, right? But in the real world, when you go outside and work, nobody's gonna tell you that. You need to figure that out yourself. So you need to know the load according to the law. You need to know the system. You need to be able to provide a system and you need to know how much the load each structural member on your system carries. Question. Crystal clear, right? Just like that. So for example, this is a better system to talk about. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's why. This, you can see, this is the roof. A roof like this is made of a piece of metal. So they call it a metal sheet. It's a sheet of metal. Okay, the, uh, this uh, generally when, when uh, you have a sheet of metal, you put it on the system. So now you need to have this to support it. This, yes, is a beam. But for the roof system, this kind of beam has a name. This is called purling. In Thai, we call it fan. Oops, sorry. Purling. And you can see uh, this is a simple system because the roof system generally is like that. You can see if I try to draw a piece of the roof, this. Let's say I, I focus on this strip 
of the roof one strip this strip is supported by the pearl in here and then the pearl in there correct so i may be able to draw the free body diagram of this strip of the roof as a simple beam. Correct? So that means without any effort, you can say, okay, this is the reaction here is WL over two and WL over two. Sorry, that doesn't look very clean. It's half half, correct? Simple as that. Meaning, I can simply say half of this roof, part of the roof, will go to the left purlin, and another half, let's use different color, will go to the right purlin. Okay? It's always half half if it's a simple beat. So that means that means I can split the area between the purlins in half by using this uh, dotted line. Okay. And I can now say that this purlin, you can see this purlin has to carry half of this roof and then another half from the opposite side. Are you still with me so far? Are you not physically, I mean, you know, mentally good? So you can see that this uh, Berlin now has to carry this half of the roof and another half and the width that this purlin has to be responsible for is called tributary width. So to be able to tell how much the load will act on this purlin is to tell how much the tributary width is. So basically it's half of this bay, you know, this area we call bay, it's half of this bay and then another half of this bay. Okay. So if I am going to draw the free body diagram of the purlin itself, I have to know the length, let's call it the length L. Sorry, L like that. So my purlin, find the area, okay. It's gonna have the length of L. And then the load should be uniform load, right? See? It, uh, the, the, the area of the roof covers the entire length of the purlin uniformly. So this becomes the uniform load. And the load, according to the law, always come in load per area. So this will be W, which is the load per area. Can you, can you see that? It's pretty thick. Maybe I'll do better. If uh, folks at home, if or maybe you're not home, uh, folks online, if you don't see anything, if you wish me to to repeat anything, do do let me know. Okay. Maybe the load per area. Load per area. W. So when you multiply the load per area by it's an orange, right? Um, maybe green is better. By the tributary width,
your Lord, her area becomes your Lord, her length. Because we already multiplied the Lord, her area by the width of the Lord. So you now have the Lord, her length, which incidentally is the uniform load acting on your beat. Are you with me? Yes or no? Excellent. So that is how we put the load on our beam, or in this case, the beam is called purling. Question, anyone? Nice. Good. So that is how you can. Now you know the load on the beam, you can proceed to calculate the maximum shear and bending moment. And you can design the member accordingly in the next class. Because you need to know how your material will behave under the law. That's, that, that's the point of having mechanics and material classes. But in the mechanics and material classes, you don't know how much each material can withstand the bending stress or the shear stress. The numbers are always given to you, right? But you will learn about that the next semester. But now you will learn about a more complicated system first so that you can perform the analysis properly to get the maximum shear and maximum bending moment so that you can use those numbers in design. And you can bet that, let's say this is the, 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 the C-shaped steel hurling. If you are going to design that, when you move into the design class, you must be able to perform structural analysis as well. So what we learned here, we don't throw it away after the exam. We continue to use them because it's professional knowledge. Okay? It's not something that you learn just to pass the preaching class. Something that you learn that you can become a professional one day. That's why you're here. All right. So you wanna uh, tell me what's gonna be next? The pearl in here is the system that is directly supporting the roof. But when, when you look at the system, you see that this pearl in itself here, what, what supports it? What supports the pearl in? You know, uh, this is not different from having a pass control, but I have to have one. That, that's the major difference. And I have to hold it like this, otherwise folks online cannot hear me. It's pretty strange. It's like trying to have ice cream all the time. <laughs> anyway, what does support a problem? You see, but you don't want to participate. You don't want to talk to me. There, right? That's a cantilever truss coming out of the corner. This, if you if you view your purling as a symbol beam, it means that it has to have its reaction here. And the reactions have to go somewhere. Just go here. So that means the next step, just to make sure that this is strong enough to analyze that, to get the force designed. And then this uh, can't live up uh, is attached to the column. So when you reach the column, your here downward actions already go down with the column. That's correct. So your job for the floor system is done. So I can safely say that yes, it is our purpose to send the load down to the foundation. The, the point with this system is that here, the purlins are not directly uh, connected to the columns. So we need to find the structure, or we need to give the structure to transfer the load from the system that is not directly connected to the column, bring the load to the column so that gravity load can go down the foundation. Okay? All right. 
So we can uh, perhaps see more system. Well, this is not easy to say, uh, to, to see, but you know, it's there. Um, this is the area where you don't have the columns and then you have the floor extending uh, out of the column. So we need to have the, the overhanging portion. But uh, I'm sorry, this picture is not very uh, clear, clear in terms of demonstration. So yeah, we will see the, the better, we'll see better in the examples. Okay, and I, I may come back and uh, give you this. But this is the, the, the columns in the uh, CB2, right around that area. Okay. This two, see uh, you are seeing okay, it. <laughs> they were there. So this is two, you, you can see that uh, in this picture, that is the, uh, you know, the, the canopy area here. See, where they don't have column, but you need to provide a canopy area to to give shelter to folks in the corridor so that they don't get wet from the rain and get uh, too much sun. But then they, they, this area, they, they don't have columns. So we, we are obliged to provide a structure like this and then extend the, the beams outside to carry the area outside. We'll see that more in the, uh, in the examples as well. Same thing. Let, let's uh, move on to this. Here. Wow. Have you ever looked up and noticed this? It's what we call the pipe bridge. So the trust from your class before can actually be used, you know? You don't just, oh, I trust the two system, my event, my why. When they get to use it, there. They use the trust system to see, support the uh, high group. The trust is good for long span. That's why they use it. And this becomes a simple analysis, just like what you've done before. Except that it just, it looks complicated because they, they put two trusts together to form a bridge. So instead of calling trust, they just call it high bridge because it's a bridge that supports the pipe. So it becomes pipe bridge, okay? And, oh, you like that. See, this is a simple system that you, you probably can understand. Um, we start off by having the same thing here, which is the purlin. You see, so that's a purlin responsible for the roof here, right? So this, in fact, is the tributary width, right? So you multiply the weight of the roof with the tributary width, you get the uniform load acting on this purlin. So it's a simple beam system again. So the next question is, where does the purlin go? So you need to provide another support for the purlin, which comes into the shape of this thing. The curve. I believe you all know this walkway, right? So when I draw the free body diagram, I will have something like this. Right? One is a free end. That means this has to be the fixed end, right? Otherwise it's unstable. And now you have the reaction coming in from the pearly. See that? That becomes your, your what? 
Come on, I'm not talking to a monitor here. She's a guy, they're real people. Oh yeah. What's that saying? I really like it. No. 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 One day I have to talk about it. Yes, it's no in English. But uh, not today. Um, but that becomes your privilege diagram. See? Yeah, here. Here. This is your freaking privilege diagram. Meaning. You are going to have to analyze structure for the reaction, right? Of course. What else can we do? What else? You just need to have this. Oh, sorry. This and this, and we have that. Right? And when you have that. You may be able to design this. Oops. This. Huh? That's engineering. That's still engineering. That's structural engineering. See? So you need to be able to, to see how you are going to apply the structure. To whatever we are going to do. You know, uh, the sad incident about the uh, the uh, water down. It's just, you know, you can say that comes out pretty diagram. And it could be good. The, uh, it's, it's a question of what we call the sequence of your work. They, uh, they got the wrong sequence. That's why the the beam that go down to get unstable. Again, if you pay attention to pay attention to the community that it should be now happening. Okay. Simple stuff. So any questions about Ooh, no question. Always crystal clear. I think they have the first question in the year from the book that oh I can come I think the it's an example of the poor issue that comes to pass. That's not the question. The question is just hard, huh? All right. Anyway. Only see him. It's great. And yeah, he's that good master stuff. <laughs> okay. You know, it's, uh, I said he will conceive. Uh, it's quite an issue with uh, our instructors. Yes, yeah. He used to be so proud that he was in front of the KFC and the fried chicken. That was the chicken with the book center. The thing about the system is that it looks okay if you consider this to be a two dimensional structure. But in, in the real world, we need it. Uh, in the three dimensional space, right? So I can draw this. If I look, if I look at the uh, front view like this. Oh. Okay. I will see this picture. Okay. Looks perfectly normal. If I put it in there, I think that it has been brought in this. Means that you have you actually have more reactions than you have to go to the equation. That's fine. We'll talk about that later. You have the first support, it looks stable. But if I look from side view, I have this. You think that's stable? Absolutely not. It's then it just says not low. But if it's Unless, of course, this is it, this. Simple. Simple. The 
question is, what they have here can be considered a pixel. Even if it's a pixel, it's a pretty vulnerable structure. That's why we provide them the attribute to see a trust like this. They have a cable which would provide stability, additional stability. It's, it looks already torn up. It's now. I'm at 21. I don't, I don't have, can you hear me? I think I have. Oh. Ah, is that better? Oh, okay, it's more like, so you like the clean sound. You don't like the heavy metal sound. With this torsion, I see. You know, anyway. Oh, it's in the class, but yeah, I can go off topic this bit. You guys know that, right? The uh, what's it called? The strangest, the stranger thing. Yeah. So my kids don't watch them, but they, 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 they kind of uh, you know, see a flash of the clip and so and so. So all the music that they used it became uh, the music in their ears. And my son, nine years old, he could not stop listening to Metallica now. So it's Metallica all day long at home. Yeah, master, master that. So I like that song. I like that album very much. It's the best uh, speed metal album ever. I can stand it because I own it. My son loves it. Problem is my wife and my daughter. Just, oh, no. Something like that. So anyway. So that, 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 that's, a, that's the idea. Okay. Now. Oh, stairs. You know these stairs, right? So you see the stairs. It's a structure that has, see the, the, the I shouldn't draw that. You see, this is not no longer one member. It's three members put together. You cannot say this is the beam. It is in a way, but it, it has special character that you need to take care of because right here at where the yellow uh, arrows are, it's called the joint where you put two members together. And at this joint, again, when you cut the free body diagram, it's just like you cut the free body diagram of a beam. But if I draw a beam and I cut the free body diagram, let's use the same color. If I cut the free body diagram, what happens? Can you draw the free body diagram of these two pieces? What do you have when, where, where I cut it? You have internal forces, yes. If you don't, have the internal forces. It means what? It means your free body diagram is not under equilibrium. It's there to provide equilibrium for you. Bluntly speaking, but it's there because it's there actually. <laughs> it's even worse, right? But anyway, that means right here, if you can cut the free body diagram there, I can safely say this is a rigid joint as well. But this joint is just like everything, it's just continuous. So you don't see the joint, you don't call it a joint. Here, it's pretty similar. If I cut the free body diagram at the joint, if you say correctly so, that you have the internal forces here, the shear and the axial and so and so, it's the same thing. So that's why when you face a system like this, now you know you have a special thing to take care of. And we still 
talk about the same thing that is free body diagram and equilibrium. Okay, so maybe uh, here is a hinge. Here is another hinge. And that's the rigid joint in a nutshell. And we're going to be doing that a lot because rigid joint is part of the frame. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Ah, no, it's, uh, it's better. I think this is the same thing, exactly the same as the uh, the Perlin system that I explained to you, but it is uh, now the floor system. This is, of course, the ceiling of your beloved KFC, right? So when you go to KFC and you look up, you see this, you see this picture because they don't have ceiling. So they expose the floor system for you, I'm not sure it's for you, but anyway, it's 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 exposed, so we can see the system and we can use it in our class. Maybe the guys who built this KFC must have thought about this long time ago, right? One day we can use this in our structure analysis class. How thoughtful! Anyway, so here it's the same. The the floor system that they use. The green one that you see here is called the precast hollow core slab. Now, you don't need to know much about this, but I, I believe many of you have heard the word precast before, have you? You want to know about it now? I'm kind of disappointed. I was ready to explain, but if you don't want to know it, I'll stop. Oh, you guys are pretty uh, whimsical. Anyway, um, pre means before, right? We all know that. Cast, just to, to cast a concrete, just to, to make the concrete to a shape. So pre-cast has been to cast something before uh, some action. So uh, the, this lab, if you cut the, the, the cross section, you see that the, the slab actually looks like this. I'm going to use the same color so that you can. It's hollow inside. Why hollow? Guess. Nothing wrong with the with guess. Guess why it's hollow. You're not wrong, and your that, answer, your answer is more explanation, but please do it in English next time, okay? And then you have both, are both are correct. Both answers are correct. Oh, uh, lady from home, do, do answer. Give your opinion, please. Oh, she's gone. Anyway, so first of, first of all, it's light. You don't need a solid slab. If you build a solid slab, of course, it's going to be better, stronger than the hollow one, of course. But it's heavy and it is not efficient because as your uh, friend from home said, we don't need the space in the middle to take care of bending moment. You got, must know that your bending stress looks like this, right? The maximum bending stress is here. In the middle, nothing. So we don't need the solid structure to handle bending moment. And in fact, you will see that for steel beam, that's the main reason why we use this shape. Correct? We don't need anything in the middle. And I say your friend's answer need more explanation because this shape would give you what? You must have had this from your mechanics and materials class. This shape is more efficient in terms of giving you the moment of inertia. 
if you calculate the moment of inertia of the two sections, one is the edge or the eye like that, and one is the solid like that. And let's be fair and say if they have the same cross-sectional area, okay? This guy will give you a lot more moment of inertia, correct? That's why you learn mechanics of material. And bending stress formula is what? MC over I, right? You cannot change the moment because it's caused by the external load. You get that with your bending moment diagram. C is the depth relates to the depth of your structure. And I is what you get from the shape. So we engineers strive to discover the shape that is most efficient in terms of giving you the resistance to bending moment. That's why they have a shape like that. Sorry, just got possessed by the ghost of structure, right? Yeah, that's why they used the Holocaust lab for both reasons. Precast has something to do with the, the reinforcement that they use. They cast the concrete before they pull the, 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 the wire in the system. So that's why they call precast. This acts as a simple beam. Okay. This system where you have the precast floor system like this is called a one-way slab system. Okay. It's very quick because you, you make this, you manufacture this from the factory and then you transport them to the side and then all you need is a crane to put them in place. If you are going to cast the floor on site, it means you have to wait for the concrete for a considerable time for it to become, to, to gain the strength. So doing this sort of uh, bypass the time that you need to wait because they can manufacture this anytime, anywhere they want. And it is a, it is a very popular system in this country. The, the one piece of the hollow core here basically is a simple beat. So I can say, okay, it's like that. Okay. So now you know half the reaction goes to the left, half goes to the right. So this area becomes the tributary area that this beam has to carry, right? And then it's another half from this side. So that again, ladies and gentlemen, becomes the tributary width. The width that this beam has to carry. Can you see it? Are you crystal clear now? I, you hope so, right? You hope so. Okay, good. So that's that. The, the, the pictures and the concept of tributary width and tributary area. Question, please. No question. Okay. Now, you can see this beam, you know, there are all kinds of uh, beam. You may call this, this beam is the ones that they directly support the beams. And uh, this is uh, sometimes they call it a secondary beam because you, 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 know, you will see this, that these beams, the red ones, they will have to be supported by this beam, the blue one. Because the blue one, uh, not because, I mean, the blue one will become what we call, what we sometimes call the primary one. Okay. 
because you cannot expect to build columns every time you have the beams, right? So you see that in this picture, the columns are here, you see? The columns are there. So this beam, the one in the middle, doesn't have the column to support it. So we provide it with the primary beam to take the reaction of this red one. And then this primary beam, the blue one, will transfer the vertical load to the columns. And then our job is done. You cannot expect to, hey, can we have columns here? You will lose the practical space if you have too many columns. Okay? It's impossible for your buildings to work if you put columns every time you need to have the support for the beam. That's why we need to have a system, proper system. And this will be especially true if you can recall the uh, uh, space like on top of this uh, KFC where you have the auditorium, the meeting room. You can have a lot of columns in there. In the uh, warehouse, you need area to store things while build a lot of columns. In the factory, you need space to uh, put your equipment in. So you can't have a lot of columns. That's why we need to have a proper system. And you can see that in this case, it's no longer a simple beam anymore. You see that this beam will be continuous with that because it's concrete. So you see, in the real world, it's, it's not easy where you can get the basic simple beam system that you have had in your mechanics material. We use more complicated system. So that is why you need to equip yourself with more knowledge to handle the structures that uh, are used in the real world. But you need to have solid foundation of free body diagram and equilibrium. Okay? Now I think it's more of the same. See? So that's it for today. It's just like that. <laughs> what do you mean, yay? Um, any question from online folks? Well, what are you waiting for? Uh, you're waiting for me to say you can go, right? Yeah, actually, you can go, yeah, please. And that's it for today, yeah. That's a uh, Korean, right? Okay. You know what? Uh, okay, let, let me uh, let me stop the record first.